Andrew Yang is an entrepreneur, author, philanthropist, and a former presidential candidate. And he's also the founder of the Forward Party and joining us now in studio to talk about the party's efforts uh, around the United States. Thank you so much for being here, Andrew. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is great. I love talking to ideas people and people who aren't afraid to dream bigger, so this is really exciting. Um, tell us all about the Forward Party. What is its mission and how did it kind of come about? Now, the Forward Party now is the third biggest party in the U.S. by resources. It's not left or right, it's forward, and that's where most of us want to go. Unfortunately, right now our current political system doesn't always get us there, mm -hmm. in part because folks get stuck in a system of, of bad incentives and special interests. So, running in the last presidential race, you did talk a lot about the state of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party as well. So, how is it that you feel that the message of moving forward, this forward movement, how was that received? Uh, it's being received great <laughs> because folks realize that our current problems aren't getting solved. Uh, you know, here in Seattle, it might be uh, homelessness or uh, education or public safety or some, some mixture. Uh, and I see that in different places around the country. And it turns out most of us want the same things. It's just that we're being set up to say, oh, it's these people's fault, it's their their fault. Mm -hmm. And that's really not what most Americans believe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're running for president, universal basic income was a huge talking point for you. What are your kind of thoughts about it now in this post-COVID era that we're in? I know, I was running on this crazy idea that AI was going to arrive. <laughs> and then Imagine here, here that. Right. Oh, really. <laughs> um, so uh, we had experience with cash relief uh, and the enhanced child tax credit during COVID. And shockers, if you put money into families' hands, uh, they're healthier, happier. Um, so we should be leaning into that because technology is just going to get stronger and faster. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you've got a couple books coming out. So next week, uh, September 12th, we've got The Last Election. What can you tell us about that and what can you tell us about Forward? All right. So The Last Election is my first novel. It's a political thriller about how the next election could turn out. Uh, and there is a presidential candidate whose slogan is do the math. So for those of you in the Yang Gang, there are probably some... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds familiar. There, yep. There's probably some resemblance. Um, but in, in many ways, this is the dramatized Hollywood version uh, of what our political system uh, could deliver us as early as 2024. Um, and the forward party is the real life version. So I wanted to tell a story because a lot of people can see the truth in stories more easily than, than in, let's say, an op-ed. Sure, sure. It's, I've it's, some it's easier to come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you have, you have. You know, you also believe in building from the bottom up and putting the focus on local and state governments at that level. So, what does that mean, and how is it beneficial to communities in your eyes? Well, well, I, I referred to it earlier. So we're told we're in a two-party system, but 75% mm -hmm. of the country, including Seattle, is a one-party system. There's one party in charge. <laughs> and so what we want to do is we want to create more choice and dynamism in Seattle, but also uh, in Missouri or in parts of Texas that feel like it's just the Republicans and nothing else. The two parties don't like to compete. So what they do is they kind of say, here's your turf, here's my turf. And what the Ford party is saying is like, look, uh, it's all America and we need to give people real choices at the local level, city council, county executive, all the way up to federal. Okay. Let's talk about AI for a minute. You brought it up. We talk about <laughs> yes. it a lot on our show here. How do you kind of see this being regulated by the government? Uh, well, my, my joke is that they're going to do the same thing they did with social media, which was not a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, 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 you hope they'll... Um, they'll get their acts together. I think you just did a story on the fact that there's an AI-generated song that um, uh, that is getting submitted to the Grammys. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, so our government, unfortunately, right now, if they get something wrong or they're slow, um, they don't pay any political price at the polls. Um, so my hope is that our government will listen to technologists like Gary Marcus and hopefully folks like me who are saying, look guys, AI is going to be maybe the biggest game changer in our lifetimes and government has to have a, a bigger role in figuring out how to mitigate the risks. Okay, so the Forward Party, just kind of speaking in that grander scheme of things, it has values-based platforms instead of policy-based. So what does that look like for your average person, your average voter? Uh, so your average voter here in Seattle might think, look, maybe I'm a traditional Democrat or I'm an independent or I'm a Republican, but I'm not 
uh, uh, satisfied with what I'm getting or not getting. So here in Seattle, it might look different to be part of the forward party than in Missouri where you might have a different set of issues. So the great thing about what we're doing with this big tent is we're saying we're going to put it in the hands of local candidates and leaders who can determine what their people want and then hopefully deliver that to the American people one one community at a time. Mm -hmm. Are there like specific um, sort of platforms that you know you would say forward parties really passionate about? Uh, so uh, Maria talked about the the values. Uh, it's about saying, look, uh, we can disagree with each other mm -hmm. while still respecting each other, grace and tolerance, uh, finding results and solutions that work based upon data mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. and, and, and facts. Essentially trying to get beyond the ideological back and forth and the polarization that right now unfortunately infuses way too much of our politics. Mm -hmm. um, back, back to social media for a minute. You know, you're so active on social media and you talk about a lot of things even outside of politics. What would you say is your strategy in terms of like how you tap into different audiences? Well, Carly, when, when I was running for president, I led with a, a bunch of facts and a platform and it worked not that well. <laughs> and then people started getting more excited when they had a better sense of me as an individual. Mm -hmm. And so on uh, social media, you can share pieces of your own life or maybe your sports allegiances or, or whatnot. And, and it humanizes you. Um, and some people will respond to that. It's one reason why I wrote this novel as well. People respond to stories, people respond to other people. Uh, people respond to ideas, yes, but they need a person often to associate that idea with. Mm -hmm. And I want to dig into this a bit because, you know, I really understand what you're saying in terms of objectively seeing that people who have voted blue or red their whole lives, maybe it's a whole family thing, they could have a hard time sort of flipping, if you will. Uh, but the reality is that making a third party popular, that is hard work as well. I mean, we've seen it fail in the past. So even though you are not running for president in 2024, talk to me about the work you're doing to make sure that the forward party stays in people's line of sight. Oh yeah, so we have 36 elected officials, mayors, um, uh, police commissioners, DAs who've already aligned with the forward party. We'll be past 100 uh, easily by next year. I joked before, like we are the third biggest political party in the country by resources. But if you look at the numbers, and I'm a numbers guy, about half of Americans say we're independents now. Uh, dissatisfaction with the two major parties is literally like 65 to 70 percent of us. So if you're an entrepreneur and you were to arrive at a market and you were to see two-thirds of customers want something new, you'd try and give it to them. Now, we don't think it's going to be fast or easy necessarily, but the future of the country is at stake. I'm a parent and uh, they're not. my kids aren't going anywhere, neither am I, uh, and the Ford Party is growing every single day because a lot of people feel the same way. Definitely. And I mean, everybody's feeling so divided these days. What do you think it would take, like if you were to boil it down to one thing, to bring this country back together? You know, it was really touching. Uh, Carly, when I was running for president, there was an avid Fox viewer who said, uh, Andrew Yang is the only Democrat I'd vote for because he doesn't seem like he's judging me. Uh, and mm. we have to get back to that. It's like, look, that, that woman in the Midwest, uh, the servers I met in Iowa, um, the folks in, in New Hampshire, I mean, we all want the same thing for our families. The problem right now is that we are being set up against each other because we're being told, look, it's this, and, and my comparison is, imagine if you were in a sports league and there were only two teams, mm -hmm. how would you feel about the other team's fan base over time? You'd start to really hate them, yeah. <laughs> honestly. So, um, so one of the things we say with the forward party is, look, the worst number of parties you can have is one, the second worst is two, three, is going to be a lot better because there are going to be a lot of folks in the middle who are trying to get things done. And then that actually puts pressure on the folks on the side to also say, okay, what are you going to do as opposed to just blaming the other side? That's one of the noxious elements of just having two parties. But look, the reality right now is, and we saw it so much in COVID, is that people are disputing facts. They're disputing data. You're a numbers guy. You're a data guy. How do we fight back against that? Yeah, uh, and, and again, this is one reason why I think getting beyond the two-sidedness is that is so important is because a lot of the reason why folks are turning on facts is because they feel like these institutions uh, aren't listening to them, aren't mm. for them, aren't talking to them. Um, and if you go to them, and I've done this, I've now met with thousands of uh, Americans who are uh, 
let's say Trump voters or in rural areas. Uh, and if you were to sit with them and say, hey, you think drug prices are too high? And they'd be like, oh yeah. <laughs> you know? sure. like, like, there are things you can find agreement on, um, even if there are other things that unfortunately, you know, it, you might be in a different camp on. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Andrew Yang, would you ever run for president again? Uh, well, my joke is that apparently I've got another 40 years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is our, it our a joke? <laughs> <laughs> That's real right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I love this country dearly. My parents immigrated here, uh, and I want to fight for a better future. We're doing that with the Forward Party. But if there was a way I could do that uh, nationally, uh, I think back very, very fondly on the presidential campaign of 2020. Met so many wonderful people. Okay. All right. We'll have well, to stay tuned. Absolutely. Andrew Yang, thank you for joining us for this conversation. We appreciate it and look forward to your new book coming out. Thank you so much. It's been it's been awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. More info, of course, on our website, fox13seattle.com slash studio 13 live. And still ahead on Studio 13 Live, we're trying out some of the new fall pastries at the Fonte.